<laughs> you talk about your friends over here. You are you, you are a good friend with Matt Berry. Can you give us an absolute radio before we let you go? See if you can take his gig. <laughs> Absolute Radio. Fantastic. <laughs> He's got the gig. John Ham, welcome to Home Time. It's, Thank you. It's great to have you on the show. Let's just start straight up. Top Gun Maverick, what an amazing movie. Thank you. Yeah, we're very, very proud of it. It's been a minute. Uh, we had to kind of push pause on on the uh, release of this film. We were meant to open in uh, the summer of 2020, and the, the world had other plans. So, yeah. Can I tell you why I think it's so amazing? Is that it's, I think it's an incredibly difficult sequel to make, because there's a load of like minefield stuff to deal with if you're going to go and make a Top Gun sequel. So you got like... Uh, Not the, the least of which was waiting 36 years. 36 <laughs> years, that's hard. American power, masculinity, macho, and Tom Cruise being older and, you know, the the rest of the cast maybe being younger, etc. So I feel like there, there was like a lot that could have gone wrong, but they, they handled it so perfectly. Yeah, part of, part of I think, why people are, are actually responding to the film the way they are is that we, we took that... That time is, is a real part of the movie, and getting older is a real part of the movie, Maverick aging, and like having having to deal with the things that you deal with as you get older, because we've all gotten older as we've watched. Time has has worked its wonders on all of us. I'm not 15 years old anymore, when I, uh, the, the age I was when I saw the first film. Yeah. It's kind of a cool experience, and, and we, we took it in stride. It was very cool. But with that time that passes... <laughs> Miles Teller giving, hey. us a, giving us a little wave from <laughs> from outside the studio. <laughs> <laughs> With that time that passes, um, it's, it's the same for us. Like the the excitement builds. So when you go into the project, if there was a split uh, percentage of excitement, but also fear at what you're going to take on, and knowing knowing how precious it is to us as an audience, what would that split well, have will, been for you? You know, I will say you're in pretty good hands with Jerry Bruckheimer and Tom Cruise, Joe Kaczynski, Chris. McC Corey, the incredible team they had behind making this film, there was very little fear, Good. trepidation, because you knew they weren't going to make this movie unless they could make it the right way. Yeah, And part of that is having TC right front and center, playing the character that essentially defined his career, yeah. coming back 30 some odd years later and you know, the same set, the same leather jacket, the <laughs> same deal, and it was like, wow, this is... This is a this is a mind blowing uh, experience, and it works. Like that's that's the really great part of it is that it works. And not only have they made a, a, a wonderful uh, continuation of this story, but they've also kind of paid homage to the Tony Scott film. You know, a lot of the images in it. I'm, I'm telling you, like within 30 seconds of the beginning of this movie, if you don't get chills, like you need to call your doctor because yeah, it's felt, like it's a real like it's it's a real moment. I felt almost like I was welling up at times. I felt like I wasn't completely in control of my own emotions, which was. Which you is, are not alone. You I, are I not felt alone. out of control at times. I did. <laughs> but is that something you're surprised? I mean, yeah, at 45 to be fighting tears. Um, it, it, are, you, are you surprised at this? The, the reaction? I know. I know. It's so early. You know, so many people still to see this. But are you surprised? Pleasantly so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's because it is. You know, it's a blockbuster. It's a. It's a summer movie. Mm. It's a. It's a popcorn movie. It's all of those things, and it has all of those elements. It's satisfying in that way. Yeah. You know, it's it's an action film. Like it's very much that thing. See it big and loud, or IMAX, whatever the largest screen you can Wasn't find. Wasn't it filmed for, was it 40, 40 something K? Yeah, four, six K. I don't know. There's a lot of Ks. A lot of Ks. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what what that entails. How many Ks there are, but uh, plenty of Ks. A lot of Ks. But yeah, it's 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 breathtaking, and it's in its movie making. But it's also the the story is there. The continuation of these characters, Maverick, Iceman, like all of these things that that are so kind of beloved to a certain generation are are very much um, given their full faith and credit in this in this story. Do you know what was interesting as well, uh, particularly because obviously you 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 filmed this back in 2018, so you wouldn't have known what's going on in, in the world at the moment as we stand, you know, with the trouble in Ukraine and all that kind of stuff. But it was very interesting that there's no named enemy in Top Gun. Yeah. It's interesting and, to think behind that. And part of that is, I, you know, I'm not sure exactly. Obviously, they're, they're, they're the first film takes place very much in a Cold War kind of uh, sensibility, and this is you know, obviously we're not in that world anymore. Um, but there's still sort of danger out there, um, you know. And I'm not going to make a danger zone joke <laughs> right <laughs> oh, now, <laughs> but I could. Um, but yeah, like it is. You, you're correct. We didn't 
make this movie to in response to any sort of particular geopolitical moment. Yeah. It just these things happen. And part of what the, what the movie really does is like highlights the fact that the men and women of the U.S. Navy and the armed services, like the sacrifices that they actually make, are incredible, and they keep us all safe, and that's a great thing to have. And it's a it's very much a a, a a tip of the cap to them as well. You speak of danger. Um, Vice Admiral Cyclone has a non-flying role in this particular yes, thank movie. You. Thank you very much. Are you? That's are me you being very smart? Are you happy or <laughs> jealous uh, at that fact? Because I remember seeing you in a film that I cherish so much earlier in your career, a smaller role uh, in Space Cowboys. Oh, but okay. I know that you have that flight in you. Look, I would have loved to have. Uh, gone down that path. I am very glad that I did not have to. <laughs> uh, Miles and a lot of the guys that, that and, and gals that had to go through that flight training, it was serious. Like, they did four and a half to five months of training. Oh, wow. 40 to 50 hours in a cockpit. Part of why they had to do that was not just for, you know, insurance purposes and what have you, but like they their bodies needed to be in the shape to withstand the rigors of what the, what it is to be in, in a plane doing the those things. And you can see that on their faces and in the actual film. you see it in the film. It's like, it is It is really, it is visceral. Like, it, it hits you right in the chest. It's very, very cool to see. Tom Cruise, obviously, is in, in those jets, as you'll yes, see him, you know, flying them and all that kind of stuff. You've probably had this put to you before whilst you're talking about this film, but, you know, genuinely, he doesn't look any different. Is he is he drinking anything? He's got a potion. If you're on set with him, do you see him drink a vial of something that's know, around his neck? I know for a fact that he is older than me, and yet, on screen... <laughs> He looks younger. I don't know how that works. <laughs> What's going on there? I but, don't know. But he's like, um, he's like a film Cristiano Ronaldo, isn't he? In that he doesn't seem to change, doesn't get older. He's very uh, focused, laser focused on what he needs to do. So you kind of respect and slightly fear him at the same time. He I can imagine. A, you know, he is a professional movie star, and there there are very few of those guys left. You know, there are very few of those guys that get their name above the title. He loves what he does. That energy, his enthusiasm, is infectious. It's it's everybody on set knows that they're in a Tom Cruise movie and is thrilled to be there. Are you on your toes because of that, though? Is he yeah, like, uh, man. You, nobody wants to be the one, the one guy that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the one guy that sucks. <laughs> um, now, my next question is, is based on a fact that may or may not be true, um, but what has given you more joy, uh, the reaction, the early reaction to Top Gun Maverick or Celtic's recent Scottish Premier League oh, triumph? Because I well, read well. that you are a fan, and, and here you are over in the UK at the time when they're trophy lifting. I was, uh, I was very pleased to be in, in attendance at uh, Celtics played uh, Hibernian, I believe, uh, at the very first game where they had a full uh, crowd again, and it was it was stirring for sure, and it made me a fan, and I was very pleased to see them uh, to lift the cup. That was very very cool. Yeah, you narrated one of my favorite uh, sports documentaries, All or Nothing, the NFL. Uh, you oh, could nice. uh, and narrate the the Celtic story even for next season. Well, listen, John. hey, I'm I'm it's available. I'm available. Yeah, be good, isn't it? <laughs> uh, just just going, going back to the movie. Uh, nice. Scottish accent's a little rough, but uh, I'm available. <laughs> We'd love to hear that. Uh, and no, you wouldn't. <laughs> and we're not going to. to hear that. So the, the, the final half an hour of the film, again, we don't give away anything, but the final half an hour of the movie is probably one of the greatest action sequences yeah, I think I've ever seen. I agree. But I would say, again, another inadequately defended ventilation shaft if you're a Star Wars fan. <laughs> <laughs> when, when it, when it's it enemies, always the ventilation shaft. Always. The baddies I mean, are never going to learn from I this, know. are they? Well, you, listen, you know, I guess you got to, you have to vent. <laughs> You've got to vent. You've got to vent in some way. But it's amazing. The uh, And the stunts, isn't, this is no CGI thing. This is real flying, real planes and everything as well. It is. Um, some of the photography in this is, I think, um, uh, uh, never before seen. I think that people are genuinely going to, you know, look, we've all taken two years off from going to the movies. And I think this is a real welcome back to seeing movies big and loud and in full format and the whole thing. That's what Joe and Jerry Bruckheimer and Tom, everybody involved in making this movie wanted. They wanted this thing to be seen in theaters. And we, that's why we waited. Yeah. You know, we, they, they could have put this out. You know, people wanted to see this movie back when it was ready in 2020, but 
the world, like I said, had different plans. So we are thrilled that it's only in theaters, and I'm very, very excited for the world to get to see this. I haven't seen it on the IMAX screen. I mean, it, it is yeah. one that has to... This is not one to wait for. This is one that has to be seen. If you see anyone watching it on their phone, because they rented it later on down, slap their phone. <laughs> <laughs> slap their phone. Just slap their phone out of their hands. <laughs> it, it was very poignant. I mean, it was, it was a very emotional movie uh, for many different reasons, but it was poignant to see Val Kilmer uh, reprise his role as Iceman. What, what was it like seeing him? Obviously, he's got health battles of yeah, his own going yeah. on. You know, Val's, Val's struggles are, are very real, as we all know. I thought the, the filmmakers handled handled his uh, sort of uh, situation incredibly well. And and you're you're correct in saying that there's a there's a scene in the middle of the film with with Iceman and Maverick that is. A, it hits you right in all the feels, for sure. It's an impressive scene, and it really does kind of kind of tell the story of how these how these uh, characters are growing up and getting older. As you say, Iceman is in the film. There is no Viper in the film, so kind of Cyclone as you play. It's actually a critical part because you are kind of the moral compass for us. A little bit. Kind of showing how <laughs> you're underselling yourself. You are you are that moral <laughs> compass that tells the audience, hey, Maverick is still a Maverick. Does that involve sort of like you and Tom sort of sitting down at any point and saying, like, you know, this is this is how we're gonna play these scenes together and sure. it's an important role. And, 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 and by the way, that's for me as a as a you know, as a just a working actor, to get to do that a- across the table from Tom Cruise is a is a once in a lifetime moment. Not for nothing. Since I've been 15 years old, I've been looking at this guy, going like, "That's a movie star. That's an actor." Like, oh yeah. my gosh! And, and if my you know 51 year old self could could talk to my 15 year old self, I mean, my 15 year old self would probably be like, "Hey, dude, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Go away!" <laughs> but <laughs> it is a career moment, and it's a. It's wonderful to be a part of this particular story. I made the Cristiano Ronaldo analogy earlier on about Tom Cruise, and people say that uh, if you if you're in a team with Cristiano, he'll stay out practicing free kicks until he goes dark and all that kind of stuff. Is this something that Tom Cruise does that you think, oh, I might that's something I might, might try and do? Does he do something different to the normal kind of pe- other people that you've worked with in the past? His energy and enthusiasm is incredibly infectious, but he is his work ethic is inspiring. I mean, he's the first guy on set, he's the last guy to leave, and he works harder than anybody else. That makes you want to do the same. Makes you want to work just as hard. Yeah. Be, be fit. Be ready to go. Be be on top of it. There's no like lag time. It's just it's all work, but it's fun. Like that's the other part of it. Tom loves making movies, and like that's a great energy to be around. I don't know whether talking about the movies once you've made it is is a fun part, but here you are in the UK at the moment. You know, talking to us about Top Gun Maverick. What's your favorite thing about being over here? I mean, there's a jet in Leicester Square right now. Like, there, uh, this transport all- for London have done some amazing stuff. John. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know how they landed it there, but I've worked over here on multiple occasions. I love being over here. I have tons of friends over here. It's great to be here with something this big and brash and bold and American and exciting. And it's like, don't talk about Tom like that. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about your friends over here. You are you, you are a good friend with Matt Berry. Can you give us an absolute radio before we let you go? See if you can take his gig. Absolute radio. Fantastic. (laughs) He's got the gig. Uh, John, on behalf of all (laughs) Top Gun fans, can we say a huge thank you for what you guys have done with uh, a movie that means a lot to a lot of people. It's in very, very good hands, and we just urge people to go and see it. I was texting my dad and my brother this morning on the way in just saying, you've got to go and see this film, because it's fantastic. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, yes, I'm very excited to to show this to the world. There's very few titles that don't... uh, get translated. Top Gun is Top Gun in every language. It's pretty cool.